Welcome, I'm Austin Shepard. I'm President and CEO of Fiduciary Trust Company. And this is the second in our series on uh, dealing with the financial implications of Alzheimer's. I'm joined here with, by Jody, with Jody King, um, our Vice President and Director of uh, Client Services, and also Dr. Lisa Genova, a Harvard-educated uh, neuroscientist and the author of the best-selling Still Alice. In our last session, we talked about the four aspects of planning and dealing with the financial uh, ramifications of Alzheimer's. First, in the identification of the situation. Second, in developing a care plan. And third, uh, the aspect of gathering information and then finally reviewing that information, ensuring that all legal documents and all uh, uh, trust uh, documents are in place. In the first two, Jody, can you talk about the first two parts of that? Can you give us a little bit more detail about what goes on or what you've seen as best practices? Absolutely, Austin. I'd be happy to. So the first step is to recognize the condition. And really, part of that is recognizing the fact that there's something going on. It may not be just grandma being forgetful. It may be something more than that. And the other part of that is actually acknowledging that it's going on. So when there's a diagnosis, lots of times people will be in denial. One or more parties in the family. It could be a spouse, could be the individual, it could be a child. And they need to come to terms with the fact that there is something going on so the person can be helped in whatever way is possible and so that a proper plan can be put in place to care for them. So some of those discussions around, that go with recognizing that there's a problem going on, the recognizing the condition, can be very difficult for families, especially if they aren't families that are used to talking about difficult issues. So once they are able to come to terms and recognize that the condition exists, then it's time to develop a care plan. And again, this can be some tough discussions too, because you're asking things like, you know, who's going to help take care of the individual? Is it going to be a family member? Is it going to be a spouse or a child? Is it going to be a par paid caregiver? Where are they going to receive care? Is it home? Is home appropriate? At what point would others be brought in or where a facility maybe need to be used? And exactly, you know, how is that going to work? If you are thinking that it's going to be a family member taking care of them, you need to also recognize the emotional toll that goes with that and the other commitments that family member may have. You know, particularly if they're a sandwich generation person where maybe they're trying to take care of mom or dad and also trying to take care of their children, that can be very difficult. Up to 40% of caregivers, their family caregivers, suffer from depression because it is such a difficult situation to be in. So once the condition is recognized, it's really important to continue the discussion and develop the care plan and get the individual's input with regard to how they'd like to be cared and be realistic about what the real care options are. Um, Lisa, I'm curious, hearing uh, Jody talk, I think about your book and about uh, how much of the, uh, the book deals with the grappling of identification and then developing a care plan. I'd, I'd be interested to hear your perspectives about that, not, not only as an author, but also as a trained scientist in this. So how do you know if you're heading down the path of Alzheimer's or is this just a normal part of normal aging? Um, you know, half of people at the age of 85 have some form of dementia, most typically Alzheimer's. The older we get, that's the number one risk factor. Um, I tell people the forgetting, you know, we all, you know, walk into a room and think, why did I come in here or where did I put my keys? It, the difference between you know normal forgetting and Alzheimer's is you find your keys and you have a moment where you think what are these for mm -hmm. or you find the keys and they're not in a coat pocket or on the couch they're in the refrigerator and so there really are differences in language memory and cognition that are out of the norm for what you've experienced your whole life you know we all have those tip of the tongue what's his name um, so it becomes that something different um, the diagnosis is a, a tough process that takes often many years to get to as a family. Um, and at, it's also a constantly shifting ground once you're there. So this conversation around a care plan, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So you start and your mom or dad or your spouse or your relative is at a certain place and everyone with Alzheimer's progresses in a different manner and responsibilities have to be given up and, and changed, but it moves at different rates and there are periods of plateau, um, especially if you've got something called a greater extent of cognitive reserve. Mm -hmm but this is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that will eventually get worse, and so it moves. And so the care plan has to move along with that. Interesting. We'll come back after this uh, session in our third session and go through the aspect of organizing the information and also reviewing it to make certain that it's in place for that ongoing aspect of dealing with this. Thank you.